Hey guys, this is Andre. I'm a certified translator and a real estate agent operating in Minsk and across Belarus. I've been relocating people to Belarus over the last three years, successfully by far. And this video is going to be a refreshing clip about the temporary residency permit, the TRP, which could be up to 12 months long. Today we're not going to discuss the whole book because the law lists some 12 or 13 different reasons uh, on how to get a temporary residency permit. We'll just discuss the market cases, the ones that I have been dealing with uh, most frequently, and you'll see which one of them fits for you. So some Belarusian genealogy, your ethnicity so thoughts and some other things are not going to be in this story. Thank you for staying with the channel and let's get started. It's really hard to come up with a rating because some of the options take very little time but considerable amounts of money and some of them cannot be really measured uh, by efficiency and speed but they still work and they still cost some money. So let's just line them up by the popularity, the, the most frequently chosen option so to speak. And number one option will be, of course, housing. If you were to be badly wanting to settle in Belarus, then buying an apartment in a major city could work. Uh, let's say in Minsk, it's roughly $50,000. You don't have to live in that apartment, in which case you'd have to rent an alternative apartment. Otherwise, it's a one-day piece of work, let's say relatively more, because maybe a week, because you'd have to search for that place, process the purchase and all. But that's the fastest, and among my audience, most of the people are valuing their time. This is not to say that our traditional technology with village houses doesn't work. We work in the budget frame of around 10,000 US dollars. And right now there's an American client stand, standing by application, which by all means should succeed. But for at each and every case there is a different solution. So it's not impossible to get it done, but it does not apply to everybody. And because of our story with our smart, fat Indian video blogger friend who is now capturing Brazilian views, uh, well, it's not really applicable, let's say, to Indians. The second most chosen option is education. It doesn't have to be a higher education degree or something. It could be just a one-year course because TRP is up to 12 months. And if you are, let's say, reasonably flexible with your work and everything, you, know, you allow some daytime classes. In that case, the, let's say, Russian course for a year could be a great investment for you because you will pay some two to three thousand US dollars, depending on which place it is. Your student visa will be arranged at one of the consulates and then you'll be here. But then again, you'll be mostly confined to the lessons and your travel will not be, um, let's say, super possible at, at any moment you like. So that's something you have to keep in mind. But it's considerably cheap. And again, you'll be spending most of the time in the country. And that's good if you don't have to, to be outside somewhere on a short notice. The third thing is business. Opening up a, up a company doesn't really give you a residency, but it allows you a business visa for 90 days in a year. But if you get employment, you'd have to pay yourself as a foreigner a pretty high salary. Getting work permit is becoming a bit more and more complicated with, with let's say, each month. We discover something new in the regulations. You have to prove that your skills and experience are better than any matching local candidate. And you don't have to stage a contest yet or something like a contest of interviews or something, but you still have to get that special work permit. And after some mumbo jumbo paperwork, you'll get yourself a company, which will lose you some three, $3.5 thousand dollars in the first year, and you will not be able to get that back. By now it could be more, so please for exact figures check for a direct consultancy with me and my accountant or with the providers that you picked for your own thing. Employment could work the same way as long as you, let's say, don't mind depending on your employer, especially if you are in IT, you have firm, solid skills that you are certain of. And this gives you the right for at least one year residency, all right, but there'll be some paperwork that the employer will be happy or almost happy to handle for you. Number four is marriage. Obviously, it has to be a genuine relationship and there is a, a little interview and the paperwork bundle is not that bad. So if you have some ongoing relationship and you don't mind converting it into a marriage, which 
my personal advice is best to clinch here it's best to undo it here as well just make sure you buy your property before the marriage or strike a marriage contract which one of my clients did by the way and already divorced quite happily so marriage is number four and it's really hard to tell if that's best money wise or time wise it's it's just the uh, uh, thing that is your separate life project then it's not something like a property or a business that you can opt for I would, I would pick property. Hospital medical attention is number five, and I have never dealt with that yet. It's something that confines you to a certain establishment, uh, whether it's blood transfusions or some pharmaceutical treatment or cancer treatment. It's uh, something, something I have never encountered, so I can't really share the details, but I imagine there is some paperwork and some arrangement through the hospital, which never does that, is probably a little bit of a challenge. The same applies to the companion of a person coming over here and taking care of that patient over here. Uh, that person is also eligible for TRP, but that all is tied up to a hospital, which is not, not a super bright thing in terms of flexibility. And last but not least, you can get a residency through close family ties. That could be your spouse, your children, your parents, although it's also very, very much case dependent and the paperwork package will vary depending on which option that is, which relative that is, but otherwise it works. And we'll have a nice mama from Kazakhstan coming in January to join her family over here. That's going to be a nice experience, I guess. So guys, generally this would be about it, about the reasons for getting the temporary residency permit in Belarus, which could be for up to 12 months. If your efforts are not too impressive, your residency may be three or six months uh, given by the local migration office and that could be renewed for the same duration. So choose your budget and make your plan very carefully and ideally consult with somebody with somebody pretty much, pretty much like me, consider that a commercial and we can work out the best solution for you because I'm not here to sell properties, I am selling solutions. This was Andre from Minsk. At some point I'll be happy to see you either at the expat meeting or just for a casual cup of coffee or for a paid consultancy, maybe online, maybe offline, if you're in town. And that would be about it. Put your feedback down below, press the likes, so dislike, subscribe to the channel. See you in Minsk at some point. Cheers.